Hi, and welcome to Self-Protection Against Business Logic Vulnerabilities at the Virtual Seams Conference of 2020. Uh, this work has been conducted uh, as a joint project between Linnaeus University in Vecre and Omega Point in Stockholm. In this work, we focus on attacks that are targeting business logic vulner vulnerabilities. We present the design and the implementation of a rule-based intrusion detection system where we use runtime verification to automatically detect attacks and self-reconfiguration capabilities to mitigate these attacks at runtime. Finally, we evaluate the effectiveness and the scalability of the approach. So a bit about the background and uh, the motivation for carrying out this project. So logical attacks are attacks that exploit business rules with malicious intent. This is often done to, in order to damage the victim's business and comes in several flavors. So an attacker might aim at obtaining information or gaining system access or disrupting the service for benign users. And there are three types of business logic vulnerabilities. Uh, first of all, there's parameter manipulation or a tampering attack. Then there is access control vulnerabilities. And what we are going to uh, focus on in this work is uh, application flow bypass or misuse. So there are several types of logical attacks and they can be used to, um, to reach several goals for the attacker. So this can be exfiltrating or falsifying data obtaining system control or causing denial of service. Attacks uh, that aim at exploiting weaknesses in uh, the domain or the business logic have yet not re uh, received a lot of attention, even though the Open Web Application Security Project, um, which lists the most prevalent vulnerabilities in web applications, lists a couple of logical attacks that could potentially also be used as a domain attack. So amongst these are injection attacks, broken authentication, broken access control, and cross-site scripting. Attacks on the business logic are typically hard to detect in real time. Um, and the reason for that is that it's difficult to distinguish between benign and malicious behavior they typically pose a threat against the business model. And um, as some examples, um, there is, for example, uh, Sniper Scripts, which used to be really popular in online auction platforms such as eBay. And there's a variety of weaknesses in the domain for uh, booking platforms, e-commerce, online polls, and so forth. And uh, as an instance of that, there have been uh, reports on mobility services um, where competitors were launching logical attacks against one another um, and the attack consisted of uh, fake bookings that were cancelled during the last moment uh, in order to um, disrupt the competitor's business. So the motivation for carrying out this work is um, that especially real-time mitigation of domain attacks is not really widely adopted. Um, on the market, there is no universal one-size-fits-all solution to that problem. And at the same time, there are new reports on novel or more sophisticated attacks that appear regularly. And at the same time, uh, I think we can all agree that manual monitoring and reconfiguration doesn't really scale well in real world applications. And um, that means that all strategies should be conducted uh, in an automated fashion. And specifically, uh, mitigation strategies um, that are conducted automatically are often neglected in both uh, research and the industry. So a bit on self-protecting systems then. Um, Self-protecting systems uh, add a protecting layer to a protecting system and uh, this achieves separation of concerns. They can be used to apply reconfigurations in an automated fashion and in this instance we are of course talking about security reconfigurations. And these security reconfigurations can be used to prevent, uh, detect 
and mitigate attacks at runtime. As a technology, we use runtime verification, and this can be used to achieve an independent protecting layer. And it typically comes with a low performance overhead, at least if you compare it to model checking or other more formal methods. And uh, that also leads to a fast responsiveness uh, of the system. So let's talk about the case study that we conducted. So we consider a fictitious hotel booking service, which is um, which only consists of four main business rules. So first of all, a user can only register with a real name and a real credit card number in order to make a booking at the hotel. Only a limited number of rooms and number of overnight stays can be booked online, and the hotel can never be overbooked. At the same time, the hotel offers a service uh, being a free cancellation policy until one day before the booking period. And um, I'm saying it now and I'm going to say it again. The benign users have a non-zero probability of cancelling their booking and making taking advantage of their free cancellation policy. So how could a logical attack uh, look like? Um, so we consider an instance of an application flow misuse attack in which a malicious user books a room or plenty of rooms, in fact, and cancels uh, them in the last second. This can be used to damage a victim's business, and in case that the attacker is a competitor, he might also profit from it because of less supply of hotel rooms. And as it is true with many um, attacks on the availability of the service, uh, the attack can be amplified if there's several attackers that are conducting it at the same time. Let's take a look at the approach um, that we have taken. So. As for our goals, we want to construct a rule-based intrusion detection system using runtime verification, which detects attacks accurately, which keeps the number of false positives at a minimum, and which mitigates the attack by installing adequate business rules, and does so at runtime. We assess the functionality of the system by applying it in a simulation environment later on. As for the mitigation strategy, in, in isolation, we cannot tell apart benign and malicious cancellation. But we can state two things. Firstly, that a malicious user is highly unlikely to pay for a room. And second of all, that um, we can detect an ongoing attack if we discover several late cancellations in a short period of time. We um, formulate policies that are aligned with the user trust, and this is actually at the center of the mitigation strategy. So a trusted user receives a better service than a suspicious user. A suspicious user, on the other hand, receives a service level that allows for a higher security. This way, we implement business rules that allow us to mitigate the attack. The system architecture, architecture looks as follows. We achieve separation of concerns by separating the protected system and the self-protecting layer. We realize the protecting layer as a monitor, analyze, plan and execute and knowledge feedback loop. And we continuously monitor the system using runtime verification. The runtime verification specification is a formal specification of the self-protecting layer, which is compiled by the LAVA runtime verification framework into uh, aspects and Java classes, which uh, allow us to run the protecting layer at runtime. Let's take a deeper look at the MAPK feedback loop. So we use runtime verification using symbolic automata. And um, we have a knowledge component, which is central to our approach. And the knowledge component holds information on the system or the overall system state, the users and the bookings, and the policy information and the parameters that configure the intrusion detection system. So the monitor uh, or the sensor gets invoked every time a, re a user registers, logs in, makes a booking, issues a payment, 
or issues a cancellation. In, in the case of a payment, the analyze and plan automaton is invoked and is directly and the user is directly um, forwarded to the execution uh, phase because we trust this user since a malicious user would never pay for, for, for a booking. The uh, situation for a cancellation is slightly more complicated since the cancellation will be checked against the IDS configuration. So first of all, it will check if the cancellation may be sp suspicious um, by checking against if the time is very short or the time frame between cancellation and uh, the planned stay, date of stay, is a very short apart, then this might be a sign uh, of, of an attacker. And if at the same time, uh, the system or the planning automaton um, realizes that there's uh, a high number of cancellations, then it may raise an alarm and decrease the trust for the suspicious users in the execution in the execution phase. So let's take a look at the experimental setup. Um, so we um, programmed the hotel booking service as a Java Spring web application, and we built the protecting layer as aspects in Java classes, which we generate by using the Lava runtime verification framework. The mixed user set is generated using a Python script and um, the mixed users are issuing HTTP requests to book and cancel um, and pay for rooms in the hotel. The user set um, consists of a mixed set of malicious and benign users and malicious users, as said before, book rooms greedily and cancel the booking in the last moment possible. Benign users, though, have a 10% probability of cancelling their booking. We have a ratio of 3 to 1 between benign and malicious users, and we have a number of rooms of 200. We conducted two experimental runs, one of which was 60 days and one of which was 180 days. But in the discussion, we are only considering the longer runs. The business rules um, are coupled with an individual trust level for each user. And this trust level is determined based on past behavior. We apply a graceful degradation scheme to compensate for false positives. And by default, all, all users are trusted. So if the trust level is high, the uh, user gets to have a free cancellation policy. If a user is slightly less trusted, that free cancellation policy um, gets slightly revoked until five days before, of, before arrival to increase the security. And at the lowest level, um, the user has to pay in advance. So that means that the attack would be completely inefficient for an attacker. The, me the measurements that we're going to take so the, those are, first of all, the parameters of the IDS, which is the consists of the cancellation period, which we stat, set statically to one day before last time of cancellation, and uh, the critical number of cancellations that are being measured within one period or one day. As for benchmarks, um, we uh, set one benchmark uh, using uh, only a benign user set, which gives us the number of how high the hotel occupancy can potentially be. And as a lower benchmark, we, um, we set a mixed user set, but we take away the protecting layer. Um, as for the metrics of the IDS, we measure the detection rate, the false positive rate, as well as the hotel occupancy. And finally, we also measure the performance overhead of the system. So let's take a peek at the results. Um, the detection rate is constantly high amongst all uh, user threshold settings, which we varied between zero and 12. Past 12, we didn't do any further measurements because the, number, uh, the numbers wouldn't have been high enough. And uh, we see um, 
quite promising rates of over 85% uh, at harsh and intermediate threshold settings, but we see also a rapid decrease of uh, detection at about 10 cancellations per day and beyond. If we take a look at the false positive rate, we see, uh, first of all, an expected behavior for an IDS. And that is like that the false positive rate is the highest, the most sensitive, at the most sensitive setting of the IDS, which makes perfect sense. And at high and or harsh and intermediate settings of the IDS, um, the false positive rates are between around 2 and 4%. But uh, if we take a look at the lowest service level, we see that the false positive rate is constantly below 0.5% across all settings. The hotel occupancy uh, indicates the mitigation effect of the IDS. And the theoretical maximum which can be achieved is 95%, uh, which we have in absence of attackers. And this is not quite reached uh, at any setting, even at the harshest setting. Uh, and the reason for that is that the system needs to um, adapt uh, since initially all the malicious users are trusted as well. But we see as a positive outcome that at each se setting of the IDS, uh, the system outperforms the setting with no IDS, um, with no IDS involved. The performance overhead of the, the that is invoked by by the aspect is execution it lies at ten point six percent on average, but only three point three percent in the median. This is likely from outliers, um, which arise from concurrency issues, since the aspects are designed to be synchronized. But overall, the numbers indicate that the approach scales relatively well. So let's take a look at the discussion and the future work. Um, so first of all, threats to validity. Um, we have come up with a simple way for the attacker to circumvent the IDS, and that is to release or to cancel the booking just the day before the IDS would actually, uh, would actually detect a potential attack. But at the same time, the attacker is rendered less efficient when the cancellation is issued earlier. And um, it has to be stated, though, that this is highly dependent on the benign user behavior. Uh, that is, it is dependent on how many benign users can are able to fit the gap between the cancellation and the, date, uh, and the expired date of stay. So for conclusions and future work, um, we showcase a rule-based IDS following a self-adaptive approach and uh, which requires no manual reconfiguration. We apply runtime verification to compile the protecting layer and um, the results of our simulations show that uh, the approach works well for detecting malicious users and increasing the hotel occupancy while at the same time maintaining an acceptable level of false positives. The performance overhead of the protecting layer is relatively low. And as future work, we assume that the de detection accuracy could be largely improved by applying a high, higher variety of detection mechanisms. And uh, we could be more efficient in mitigating the attacks by uh, applying more advanced self-reconfiguration techniques.